which one is Kodak Ektar 100 and which one is shot on the Fujifilm X-H2S? <laughs> Go ahead and put in the comments below if you think A is film or if B is film. If you ask me, I don't think I would pass this test and I shot both these images. Okay, I know the thumbnail might have been a little bit of clickbait. Presets aren't dead for Lightroom, but I think there's a convincing case with Dehancer. Y'all know I love Dehancer for um, filmmaking for DaVinci Resolve and, and Final Cut if you use that. And you can use my code for any of their products. You'll have the link in the description below. But outside of actually like being a huge fan of their stuff for filmmaking, I also love it for photos. If there was a better way to utilize it in batch editing, I would not use presets, period, in Lightroom anymore. However, that's not the case. So there is still a case for presets, but there's some amazing features with Dehancer and Lightroom. So we're gonna take a look at it and see what you can do with such an awesome tool. Lightroom suggests starting with um, just a base setting of really decreasing contrast and exposure overall. And so we'll click on that and that'll have our settings here. I'll actually, I'll have that on the screen what you can um, set those to. Okay, and then after you apply the base, what you're gonna want to do is now open it in Dehancer. I'm all over the place, there we go. And then you can just run with that option, edit, boom. And now let's make it full screen, that didn't work. One thing I like to do is just start with um, a profile and one film that is very popular or was for wedding photography was Fuji Color Pro 400 H. People love that film. And so we're just gonna click on it and start with that. Already liking the results. Now, one thing that I have talked about with my other review for DaVinci, DaVinci, Dehancer for DaVinci. Uh, I don't love that it starts with the film grain. I just think it kind of, takes away from, it distracts while I'm trying to edit this. So I'm gonna turn that off and we'll go back to, um, I usually I usually skip out on film developer and uh, film compression. Film compression is pretty handy sometimes when you, actually, I take that back. <laughs> when I click that on it already immediately, like it does a really good job at smoothing out these uh, these highlights. It looks great. So. We're gonna use that. That's what film compression is really good. Sometimes you have to finesse the uh, like the settings for it, but that was like a one click thing, and so it just depends. Looks great. Next, we will. So this would be linear without the film print. So there are motion picture films, and there are still photography film stocks in this. I have noticed the best results are if you stick to like the true like way that this would be captured. And so these two print films are for the motion picture. Uh, sitting on film log is for something entirely different. If you'd use like a film print emulation in Da, da Vinci or something like that, sitting on film log is what the film scan would be for a motion picture film. But the one still film that we have is Kodak Indera Glossy Paper. This just adds that contrast, little richness to it. So I would stick to Kodak Indera for still photography um, film stocks. And I would move to uh, these other two for motion picture, the ones that say vision in front of them. All that considered, let's now adjust exposure on this slider. I have noticed if you expose, if you adjust exposure on this one, I'll just show y'all, like we start to lose some highlights really quickly, like uh, an unreasonable amount. And then if we try to correct that here, it's it's never claimed back. So I would I would avoid using exposure compensation there on the source. Uh, it just doesn't do a good job, but it does fine here. I do want to increase contrast back um, now that we kind of have that settled. And then color density is such an amazing tool. Um, I talk about it a little more at length in my review for DaVinci, but basically what it does is it just brings some richness to the skin tones. And I almost like, I always crank that thing. Um, you can kind of just see a little before and 
after just what it what it does there and and it just looks incredible so this would be like without the print with the print it looks fantastic so i'm already liking where we are at this image looks really good already i do think i want to bring that white point down just overall there is an analog range limiter uh if you feel like it's a little too contrasty this does a good job at like keeping it in that analog range to make it look a little more filmic maybe but i like where it's at color head is a really cool tool um it just does a good job it's actually like the true way that when film was adjusted um the colors it's this is how it was done and so it's a cool way to like be authentic to how it was captured what i think i would like to see here is like just bring in a little bit of of cyan um into definitely going way too far here but what's cool is you can adjust the impact and so you can kind of get like what you have in mind so as you see i have like some cyan here um, and then you can pull the impact down. And so now if you have like a little before and after, you can kind of see what that did without like drastically changing too much. I think now we're in a good spot. I don't want to impact um, skin tones too much, but yeah, I like that a lot. Next is film grain. I love film grain and I particularly love how um, Dehancer tackles film grain. And so Unlike Lightroom, I think Dehancer Film Grain is indistinguishable from real film. It, they do such a great job at like basically analyzing the photo and baking it into the image. And really what sells it in my mind is this resolution slider. Film is not supposed to be like overly sharp, right? It's it's so this would be like without decreasing the resolution of the image at all. And then I, I just feel like when we're at like 50%, now we have a realistic image here with a slight decrease in resolution, but that grain just adding to the image. I think zero might be a little um, intense, <laughs> but 100 definitely like, it just doesn't look right throwing that grain in there without, you know, having a film like image so for that 50 percent mark then i think that looks really good and realistic and you can adjust like each individual level of shadows midtones highlights i think it's pretty spot on and you can even um some color films have more color grain than others i don't see like too much color grain in this i think it's in a good spot as is but if you wanted to see you could increase it or you could have zero uh color grain I like it in the middle. I think it looks fantastic. So I do like positive. Y'all probably just saw me change that without even mentioning it. I just always, I think that positive is my preference. It's not near as strong as negative. And so, yeah, the next one is halation. Halation is not as prevalent in still photography. And I'm going to get on a pedestal here and kind of rant a little bit. Not really. One way to like quickly make the film look cheesy is to overdo halation. I see it all the time, but if you just like throw halation on, actually it does a much better job in my opinion than Da Vinci's. It's usually just immediately way too heavy handed. This one doesn't look awful. Um, actually, you don't get me wrong, like you can make some amazing um, looks with halation here. Just don't overdo it is, is really the moral of the story here. So like I was saying, you want to make it look not cheesy and um, you don't want it to look unrealistic. I'm kidding, obviously. One thing that I do love and think that you can also overdo, but it really adds to the image and sells the look is Bloom. Also, sorry for the clacking. My dog doesn't pick his feet up while he walks. And so um, hopefully he moves on soon. You done, bud? Anyway, so going with Bloom, the first thing that I like to do is just use the source limiter to see what is blooming. And I don't think I want much more than the window. Like, obviously, you can see, like, her whole arm is blooming there. I think here, like, it'll just be the high contrast, um, super bright spots. And so right there, we're kind of honing that in. Let me turn the mask off. 
and we're seeing that it's blooming in the highlights, which is great. That's what we want. But next, I will actually decrease it um, quite a bit here on the highlights. And if you look at the mask now, now we're really at the window there. Um, and so turn it on and off. You see a slight bit of bloom there, but it's not really altering the image much. It's just kind of selling that look. I'm gonna increase it a little bit. There we go. It's it's just the right amount. I think every tool that you use in this stuff, like just a little bit. Um, go too far and then back it off until it looks right. And the last feature is vignette. I think that like it would be really nice to just draw your attention in to the subject here. And so as you see, it's already like the settings are already pretty spot on here with vignette. You'll now see that there are two images if it loads. And so now I will just show you all the before and after because it's pretty dramatic here. Before and after. I love it. I think it looks awesome. So one of the next images that we will do will be this one here. I think that we can get like a fun film vibe with this. So we'll do the same thing, dehancer base. Just make sure that nothing is already clipping here. Um, it doesn't look like it, so we're good. If it is, then you should just pull your highlights down because once it's a TIFF, not a RAW, then you're kind of working with less information. So we will edit in Dehancer. And now that I've explained everything, I'm just gonna quickly go through how I would edit this. So I kinda want like a fun, vibey uh, film look now. And so what I'm going to do, sometimes a black and white with bad um, color, or I mean, not bad color, bad lighting really works well with um, a scene like, oh, the Eastman looks cool. That's actually, a, I think, a motion picture film. So what I'm going through now is the presets, actually, which is like a bunch of settings already adjusted by the Dehancer team and other people as well, other creatives. And so uh, I think you can actually go through and go to all presets. And so let's see, just scrolling through what stands out. Oh, that's cool. If I turn down um, the grain, I think that would be a really good one. I'm still drawn to black and white on this though. I think the East, this one looks really cool. So we're gonna roll with this actually. The next thing I would do is I would, go here and increase the exposure a bit. Let's bring that wide point back down. And like with this preset, we're already in a really good spot. I don't know what else I would do for this image. Like this is just, what else can we do here? So um, as you can see, this can be really handy um, to like just quickly click through film looks and see what works with the image. I love that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing any more moving on. All right. And now let's go through profiles. And like I said, I want something that just kind of has like, I want like some blue highlights. I just want it to be very like on the nose filmy. Right. And so, um, there's Kodak Ektar. Like I said, it just kind of has a tendency to turn highlights blue. That looks good. Okay, cool. We're going to roll with that then. So let's zoom in here just so we can kind of see the faces as our main focus. So I want to increase the color density as I usually like to do. I think exposure wise, we can maybe go up just a bit, maybe a little on and off. Yeah, that looks great. Let's bring a little warmth into the image. So let's add our film grain now. My favorite part of the process. I want this to be a little more um, on the nose uh, grainy. And so let's just go to, we'll stick with negative here. Um, and we'll just increase the size a bit. Um, I think going too, like too big is just too much, right? Like that wouldn't be too realistic, but I do think we have a lot of flexibility here. Um, and then maybe just a little bit 
maybe just decreasing a little bit on the resolution, but I do want to bring it down a little bit in these midtones. And I feel like we're in a good spot with the film grain. So zooming out, you'll see a full screen on your monitor now. And that looks good. Bloom, too much bloom. Um, so let's, let's bring in the source limiter a bit and then we can decrease our highlights just a bit. And then amplify is a really good way to just control the overall amount, as you can see. So let's find a, I do want, again, I want this to be a little more like, like filmy, um, maybe like a old vintage lens shot this right and i think this does a really like a really good job of before and after for you before and after looks pretty great vignette just helps draw you in here's a before here's an after what a cool image Okay, this next image, I really want to compare it to a real film photo shot in Ektar 100. So we can kind of just see how accurate is this? Like, are we actually getting an accurate um, depiction? Now there are so many variables. So please consider that like a lab is scanning this, processing this. There's different um, scanners. There's different ways that the lab tech will adjust the image. So just Take that with like a grain of salt. There will be differences regardless. It didn't matter if it's the same exact image, different places that scan it will have a different result. So you'll have to consider some of those variables, but also let's just see how close it is. And I mean, right away, we're already seeing, in my opinion, results that kind of resemble um, Ektar. I, I just, I think that we're in a good starting point to sell this film look. And one thing that we can just immediately do, I think that will be impactful and helpful is to increase color density. And I mean, cranking that I think already helps a lot. Um, you can kind of just see how it brings some richness into the image. And we can also, I think just bringing up the overall exposure and then contrast is gonna help a lot. Like the film image is a contrasty image there. And so that's already like doing that. I'm already convinced that this could have been from that same roll of film. Um, if you just look at the greens and the blues, they lean similarly. Now, I think what you can tell from this is we're already in a really good spot um, to match this film stock. And so I went ahead and added the grain. Um, I think we can go with a positive here. Kodak Ektar 100 doesn't have a ton of grain. Um, and so if I were to match it, I think we could like honestly stick with these base settings and, um, and that's a pretty convincing look right there. And so let's add a bit of bloom. Not that much though. We can just turn amplify down and maybe, um, our source limiter up. Yeah. And that does a good job. And we can do a halation. Let's try it. And as you see, I turn it on and everything just like goes nuclearly red, right? And so that's not realistic. So let's turn our source limiter up quite a bit. Um, I don't really want any just falling into the skin tones. And so we have to be really careful there. What we can do is just kind of turn Amplify down. And I think it's... I think it's in a good spot now. We're on her backpack. You can see a little halation. Um, it is still falling into um, the skin here. I think we could probably turn down local diffusion too, and that would help. Yeah, that actually helps a lot. Okay, cool. And a little before and after. And you know what? Screw it. Let's make those greens look right. So I think we should go like a little, a little aqua with the greens and yellows here. <laughs> Doing that, I mean, which one is the film image and which one is not? These look, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. This looks identical almost. 
Okay, well that will just about wrap it up for um, this Dehancer for Lightroom review. I do have, again, a really in-depth review over it in DaVinci. All of the tools are very similar, um, and I also would just suggest doing some extra research on um, all of the tools, because I, th I think there's so much that you can dive into it. But also, don't overthink it. It's really fun to uh, just create film-like images. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, don't overthink it, and don't overdo it. That would be my advice. But that will wrap it up. Uh, use code Aaron at checkout and that will help me out. It helps support this channel and is one reason that I'm able to do videos like this. So I really appreciate y'all sticking through it till the end. I will catch y'all in the next video. Until then, peace.